Hey everyone, welcome back to Self Serving Skillet. I am going to try to be short and sweet today because the internet where I'm staying leaves a lot to be desired. I'm gonna make you today just such a wonderful sandwich and I needed to do this because I'm baking bread for next week's episode, next week's Italian beef. It's going to be here pretty soon. So I have two of these long French rolls baked off and you can see on one of these, that's why you split down the top, make some controlled cuts. But to make one of these today, I'm gonna do a big spoon each of yeast and sugar mixed in some 95 degree Fahrenheit water, about a cup of that. Now, if you're somewhere that's dry, somewhere that's in the middle of winter, you might wanna add a tablespoon or more of water, but we can also do that at the mixer. So when that yeast is all done proofing and that water and sugar, I'm gonna add a little spoon of vegetable oil and that all goes in my stand mixer with the dough hook attachment. And to that, I'm gonna add two and three eighths cups of bread flour. Now bread flour has a higher protein content than all purpose flour, so you're gonna get a lot more gluten development. That's 400 grams, by the way. And I'm gonna add that to my stand mixer on low in about three parts. And just before I add that last part of flour, I'm gonna go in with about half a big spoon of salt. That goes in a greased bowl to double in size. It's gonna take about an hour, hour, 25 minutes. We're gonna punch that down and roll out our long French rolls. Let those proof in a warm spot for about 45 minutes. Cut that little slit down the top or we can go sideways just so that the bread knows where to separate so it doesn't do this. When it's done proofing, when it's almost the size that you want it, you're going to splash it with some water and put it in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven that's around 190 Celsius for about half an hour. 25 minutes, half an hour, check it at 20. All right, so it's time to build this sandwich and we want a lot of elements in the sandwich. Anyone can slap a piece of meat on a piece of bread with a piece of cheese or maybe even not and call it a sandwich. I want something a little more purposeful, a little more intentional, full of flavors, full of different flavors. So I'm gonna use the uh, ugly bread today. I'm gonna save the, the pretty bread for our Italian beef that we're making next week. And I'm just gonna split this right down the middle, make myself a nice submarine style sandwich. On both sides of this bread, I made this sandwich spread out of mayo, which I'm not gonna tell you how to make because we've made that on the show before. In fact, I'll put a card right up here and link it in the description below so you can watch it after the video. But we made some homemade mayo and we chopped up some of that mild jardinera that we made on Patreon. That link's in the description below as well. For as little as a dollar a month, you get to support the show and get all of my new content ad free. We have our base for our sandwich and I'm gonna go in with a little lettuce, but not just any lettuce. I'm, I cut this thinly and dressed it with a little rice wine vinegar, a little basil, a little salt, and that is gonna be one element of our flavor profile. Lay that down in a good healthy layer. Next up, tomatoes. And I did these in red wine vinegar. Splash some red wine vinegar on there. A little oregano is wonderful with tomatoes. There we go. Salt is just great. And I'm going for different flavors and different textures and different colors too. So I'm gonna go in with some sort of thinly sliced orange bell peppers. And this is gonna be very nice. It's gonna be nice and refreshing. I didn't dress these at all because they are just so delicious on their own. 
And then in the middle here, notice a different color, different texture, different flavor profile, some pepperoncinis that instead of cutting into rings, cause I've got a lot of rings on the sandwich, I cut them into strips and we'll just put those down here because on top is going the cheese and the meat and the pepperoncinis have a lot in common with this Chardonnay in the spread. So we're spreading out the flavors a little bit. Cheese over the top. We're going with Swiss cheese today. Notice I'm spreading out all of these layers and maybe I wanna go with folds. You could also drop the meat in place like that, get a little more texture. And today I'm just going with folds and the crown on the king. That, <laughs> that looks really nice. That is a sandwich. Now this is probably getting cut in four parts, so I'll just go for a fourth right away, and that'll probably be a little easier to manage. Let's taste that. Mmm. Mmm. It has all the flavors. This nice, yeasty, fresh-baked bread with a nice, crisp crust, nice, soft chew. That uh, Swiss cheese has such a nice, nutty flavor, but the Jardinera in that spread really just takes it to the next level. And then doing different dressings for both our lettuce and our tomato, I can taste everything in there. Orange pepper gives it a nice crunch. The uh, pepperoncini gives it just a little bit of heat, which we don't have with the mild jardinera because we didn't put any hot peppers in there. So it needs it a little bit, but it has enough to just uh, combine with the whole rest of the sandwich. This is really great. Can you buy uh, store-bought ingredients, store-bought bread, etc., and apply these same principles to your sandwich making? Absolutely, and most often I do. Just had to bake this bread for next week's episode, which will be the uh, ultimate expression of the jardinera. If you wanna know how to make that mayo, I made one egg yolks worth of mayo for this entire thing, and I have some leftover. That is gonna be linked right over here. I've made some wacky and fun sandwiches before, kind of out of necessity. We're gonna put that right up here, and I'll see you next week.